let us assume we have these three programs and we want to find the time complexity of these three functions okay so as you can see in the first function i am printing hello and this is using a for loop now in the case of this for loop if we talk about these individual statements then how many times this statement will be executed see what we want to do here is we want to find the running time complexity of this function okay and how do we give the running time complexity we are going to give this using the notations which is big o notation big omega notation and big theta notation right so here we are going to give this note we are only going to give in big o notation here in this case just to so that we can understand what is going on here fine so in this function i am ignoring that this statement the fun function is going to take some time because i am just saying that in the for loop if we have any statement which i have already told you that for example if you have any function in that function the function which is going to execute the maximum number of time or the function which is going to have the maximum power that is going to give you the time complexity which we have already seen okay so we will see here what is going on here okay now in this case in the first for loop this statement it will be executed once the second statement this it will be executed how many times it will be executed to approximately n plus 1 time but i'm just writing it as n times okay why this will be executed n plus 1 times because from 1 to n this statement will always be true but after the value of i becomes n plus 1 in that case this statement will become false but in vague sense we are just ignoring the small constant 1 so here see in all these cases i'm assuming that the value of n is very large or the value of n is tending to infinity okay then only we can give this function fine so remember what we are going to do here we are going to give the rate of growth of a function so when we are giving the rate of growth of a function in that case it does not matter that we are going to ignore some small constants like 1 2 3 1000 2000 these are the small constants because they are the constant values we do not want the constant values we just want what is the rate of growth what is the rate of growth okay so here what is the rate of growth this statement will be executed approximately n times and how many times this statement will be executed it will be executed approximately n times and how many times this statement will be executed it will be executed n times so in total how many times all these statements will be executed so if we represent this statement with a function fn then it is 1 plus n plus n plus n which is equal to 1 plus 3n which is equal to 1 plus 3 okay now if we have fn is equal to 3n plus 1 okay and let us say let gn is equal to n and why i have taken gn is equal to n because this is the closest to this remember i in the previous videos i have told you that uh, we are going to give the tightest upper bound in that case now in this case also we are trying to give the tightest upper bound so here for this function what is the tightest upper bound it is n therefore i can say that fn is order of gn right therefore we can say fn is order of gn hence the time complexity of the above program will be order of gn that means the rate of growth of this function is order of gn okay now time complexity is the rate of growth of function for the time the Num number of statements which are being executed okay so we check the time complexity by calculating what are the number of statements being executed fine now in the second case if you see try to analyze how many times all these statements will be executed the first statement it will be executed only once the second statement it will be executed how many times see what is this what is the difference between this and this this is just making i is equal to i plus 1 and this is making i is equal to i plus 2 and because of this statement this will be executed approximately n by 2 times and this will be executed approximately n by 2 times and this printf statement will also be executed approximately n by 2 times that means all these statements are executed n by 2 times n by 2 times n by 2 times and one time therefore i can give i can show this as n 3n by 2 plus 
3 n by 2 plus 1. Let us suppose this is a function f n. Now I can give a function g n which is n therefore I can say that f n is order of g n which is equal to f n is order of n. That means the running time complexity of this function will be order of n. Okay. Now in this case see here if you can see this is incrementing exponentially. The value of i is growing exponentially. Here the value of i was growing linearly. So you know what is linear and what is exponential. What is linear? Linear is if you have this graph and the graph is growing like this then it is linear. But if the graph is growing like this then it is exponential. Right? In the both these cases it was growing linearly. But in this case, it was going, it is going exponentially. Why? Because every time we are multiplying the value of i by 2. Right? Therefore, what will happen? We have to identify how many times these statements will be executed. Fine. Then let us see how we can identify this. See, for the first time, this will be executed only once. Now we want to know how many times this will be executed. First of all, the value of i was initially the value of i was 1 i was 1 next time this this will be printed next time the value of i will become 2 right then we'll come to this so 2 is less than n yes again we'll go to this this is this will print again we'll come to this so the value of i will become next time 2 square next time again 2 square is less than n Therefore, we will print this, we will execute this. So, the value of i will become 2 cube. Again, 2 cube is less than n. We will come to this. Again, we will go to this. The value of i will become 2 raised to power 4. Again, we will come to this. We will do this. And the value of i will become 2 raised to power 5 up to so on. Up to let us suppose it is 2 raised to power k. Right? So, when do you say this for loop will terminate? When can you say that this for loop will terminate? This for loop will terminate when the value of i or the value of i is greater than n. This for loop will terminate when the value of i is greater than n. And when the value of i will be greater than n, if you see all these statements, when you can say if this 2 raised to power k, if 2 raised to power k is greater than n, then only we can say that the value of i is greater than n. Now, if you see how many times the for loop ran till that time, right? So, if this is this, this can be written as 2 raised to power 0, this can be written as 2 raised to power 1, we have executed this loop k plus 1 times, and at the kth time, the value of i will become greater than n the value of i will become greater than n then only this for loop will terminate that means from this time to this time the for loop was the condition was true so for loop will execute it total n times and at total k, k times and at the k plus 1th time the uh, condition will become false right therefore at that time what will be the value of k so take log on both sides so therefore take log taking log with base 2 therefore this will become log 2 raised to power k base 2 should be greater than log n base 2 this can be written as k log 2 base 2 should be greater than log n base 2 and this statement is actually 1 therefore this can be written as k should be greater than log n base 2 or can say log n. Therefore, how many times this for loop will run? This for loop will run approximately log n times only. Right? So, this statement will be executed log n time. This statement will be executed log n time. And this statement will also be executed log n time. Right? Therefore, in total how many times these statements are executed? It is 1 plus 3 log n and here you can see 1 plus 3 log n they are the constant values right so if you see in the previous 
Examples also here 1 plus 3 was a constant, constant value, 3 was a constant value, 3 by 2 is a constant value and 1 is a constant value. So we are ignoring these constant values. These are just the coefficients but we cannot ignore the powers which I will tell you in the next, next examples because power contribute to the rate of growth but here it is just kind of a linearly multiplying this okay so here but what we are saying here it is 1 and 3 is a constant value therefore we have only written order of n here also we can also see only write order of n in the same way here it is 1 plus 3n log n therefore the time complexity can be written as order of log n order of log n so time complexity of this function is order of log n fine now let me take more examples okay now let us assume that we have these three functions okay now the first function this statement will take one in time to execute now in the while loop how many times this statement will be executed the statement is i less than n the number of times this statement will be executed will be decided by this statement this is the incrementation statement so what is this incrementation statement it is incrementing the value of i by a multiple of 3 right that means that means for the first time the value of i was 1 next time the value of i will come 3 next time the value of i will come 3 square next time the value of i will become 3 cube up to so on let us suppose the value of i is becoming 3 raised to power k now this condition will be false this condition will be false only when we can say that 3 raised to power k is greater than or equal to n right therefore if you take log on both sides it will be log 3 raised to power k with base 3 should be greater than or equal to log n with base 3 which is equal to how much take log will be multiplied here so k will be multiplied here so it will be k log 3 base 3 and this log 3 base 3 is actually 1 so this will come k should be greater than log n base 3 that means if the value of k is greater than log n then only this statement will be executed this statement this while loop will terminate now when this while loop will term terminate till that time how many times we ran this loop this loop ran approx approximately 3 raised to the power 0, 3 raised to the power 1, 3 raised to the power 3 up to so on, 3 raised to the power k. That means approximately k times. Hence, this loop will run approximately log n times. Right? Therefore, the time complexity for the above function is also order of log n. Okay? Now, in this case, let us assume, uh, let us see what is happening here. This statement will be executed only once this statement will be executed n times approximately this statement will be executed n times this statement how many times it will be executed this statement will be executed total n times why it is being executed n times because of the outer loop outer loop is, ex uh, is executing n times so every time we come to the outer loop this inner loop will execute it will be executed and it will, this statement will be executed total n times and how many times this statement will be executed it will be executed total n square times and how many times this statement will be executed it will be executed total n square times and how many times it will be executed it will be executed total n square time so in total how many times these statements are executing it is 1 plus 3n plus 3n square which is the function fn therefore it will be executed approximately this many times right if you don't understand this then there is one more thing which you can do see the outer loop will run order of n time which you already know by and the inner loop will run will also run order of n time which you already know by but because of the outer loop the inner loop will run total order of n square time because of the outer loop right therefore you can say here in this function if we have this function fn and we take the function gn as n square because this n square is a tightest upper bound to this function therefore we can say that this function fn is order of n square 
the function fn is order of n square that means we have given the order notation fine therefore the time complexity for this function will be order of n square now in this case if you see how many times this will be executed only once how many times this will be executed total n times how many times this will be executed total n times how many times this statement will be executed n times but how many times this will be executed there is a twist here what is the twist in the last case it was j is less than n but here j is less than equal to i that means the loop j is dependent on the value of i then how many times it will be executed see if we see the value if we j and the value of i now when the value of i is 1 then j loop will be executed one time this statement will execute two times but i am saying it is the loop will be executed one times when the value of i will become 2 the j loop will be executed two times when the value of i is 3 the j loop will be executed this complete loop will be executed three times sorry three times when the value of i is 4 then j loop will be executed four times up to so on when the value of i is n minus 1 because at when the value of i will become n then this the condition will be filled or you can say just make it less than equal to n for simplicity so when the value of i will become greater than n then this loop this condition will be filled so when the value of i will become n then j loop will be executed total n times right and when the value of i will become n plus 1 therefore j will not loop will not be executed fine so how many times the j loop has executed in total it was executed 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to so on n times which is equal to how much n into n plus 1 by 2 which is again n square plus n by 2 hence it is order of n square because the highest power is n square fine so see in both these cases what happened here i can just see if we have two loops that is one loop is nested inside the other loop if you have two loops in those two loops whatever loop will be executed the maximum number of times here the inner loop will be execu executed the maximum number of times and if you can tell how many times the inner loop will be executed then it will give you the time complexity in this case fine so we have seen this example don't worry if you don't understand this i have approximately 20 more examples to take so you can uh, go through all these videos and i will take examples of every uh, i will take all examples which will be of different types which will be covering everything in all the videos and by the end it, this topic will be clear to you okay